drama. I just wanna be a diamond, babe. Hey guys, so today's video is all about powder blush. It's way more versatile than a lot of people may think it is, and I personally love blush. I think that it can really amp up and change any look. So, to get the full lowdown on powder blush, let's just jump right into the video. So for powder blush, I went ahead and did a four category breakdown. So the first category is of course color, the second category is finish, the third category is your tools, and the fourth one is placement and technique. So when it comes to color, it's really totally personal preference. I feel that the best way to find blushes that really suit you and look good on you is to just try a bunch out. The reason why it's difficult to kind of say this color is great for this person is because one blush will never look the same on multiple people because of the skin tone and undertone but also because of the natural oils, the base makeup that that person may be wearing. All of those things come into play and really change up the color of blush on your skin. So just keep that in mind. I would also suggest that if you are just getting into blush and you don't really know what color suits you best, don't put the blush on your hand and pick colors. Go to a store, go to a friend's house, put the blush on your cheeks, have someone apply it for you, and then walk around the whole day, take pictures, and really see how you feel with that blush on over a period of time. And if you like it, great. If you don't, on to the next. For finish, there are really four main finishes to choose from. You have shimmer, matte, metallic and satin. So for shimmer it basically means that the blush is going to have a visible shimmer or glitter sheen to the powder. So for example this is NARS Luster and even just by turning it you can kind of see the sheen that's on the powder and when you swatch it you can see how shiny it is and there's actually specifically for NARS Luster, it's a peach base with a gold shimmer running through it that's pretty strong. A matte blush is of course just a matte blush, it's going to have no shimmer, no sheen. So an example is Bittersweet from Urban Decay, this is their new afterglow 8 hour blush and that color is gorgeous. So you can see that that is matte, there is no glitter. If there's a sheen pulling up on this, then it's probably, I think, just my lighting, but it's a matte blush. For satin blushes, the best way for me to describe it is in between a matte and a shimmer. So it's not totally matte, but there's no obvious glitter or shimmer particles in it. It just has a very glowy, dewy finish. My favorite at the moment are the Clinique Cheek Pop blushes, where if you watch my videos, you probably already know this. But this is the Cheek Pop in Plum Pop. So you can see that there's definitely a sheen, but at the same time, there's no obvious glitter or shimmer. A metallic blush is a blush with a lot of extreme high sheen. It doesn't have glitter particles in it. It's just a very metallic, metal-looking finish. So an example of that is the Laura Mercier. This is the pink mosaic shimmer block. So for some skin tones, if you use this, it's a great highlight, but I find that when I use the two darker shades, it definitely is a blush. It's not a highlight for me. So that is pink mosaic, and you can see how metallic and shiny that is, and there's no different colored glitter or falling out glitter, it's literally just the powder. If you have really large pores, if you have a lot of severe acne or severe acne scarring, or if you have mature skin, basically anything in your skin that you don't want to emphasize, try to stay away from very metallic shiny blushes. What tends to happen with very high sheen products is it emphasizes the skin's natural texture, so just be aware. As I have said in almost every single other video of mine, 
tools, at least according to me, are what really are going to make or break your makeup experience. I will say as a rule of thumb that when it comes to brushes, denser brushes or thicker, more stiff brushes are going to give you a much higher color payoff. So that means that when you put it into the product and then you put it on your face, you're going to get a lot of intense color. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for a blush brush. The first tool I have is a tapered large fluffy brush. This is a Real Techniques blush brush. So what this is going to give you is really nice blendability pretty good color payoff, but you're not going to get a ton of control and precision with this brush. So if you want to use your blush in a very specific place, or if you have a very small face, this may not be the best brush for you. But I really love this brush and it blends out so beautifully. This is a Chanel number no. 7 blush brush and it's kind of a flat tapered brush. I don't know if Chanel does this number seven anymore, but they still do a blush brush that looks very similar in shape to this. And this is a Sephora angle brush. I'm sorry it's dirty. I actually use this for my bronzer, but this is just a basic angle brush. This is an older version from Sephora, but the main concept is the same. So with these two brushes, you're still going to be able to blend out the product pretty well, not as much as the fluffy tapered brush, but these brushes and the shape of them are going to give you a lot more precision where you can really place and kind of sculpt out exactly where you want to put your blush. Also, as far as color payoff, you're still going to get great color payoff with these two brushes. This next brush is my holy grail blush brush. This is the NARS Yachio brush and I will say that it's an expensive brush but I think that it's totally worth it. The shape of the brush is just a tapered small brush. It's similar to the Real Techniques but it's much smaller. It gives you great blendability. You can really buff out product really nicely, but because of the size, you can also get very precise. The thing that I love most about this is that you can never overdo blush with this brush. I always used to be a little nervous to use super crazy bright blushes, but with this brush, somehow I can just get the perfect effect. It never picks up too much product and it blends it out so beautifully. This is just my absolute favorite. The last brush I have is a duo fiber brush. This one is the Real Techniques duo fiber face brush. So what's great about a duo fiber brush is that it's going to pick up a lot less product. So if you like a really natural look, or if you're a little bit nervous about really bright blushes and you want to build your blush color up, a dual fiber brush is going to be great for that. Also, this is going to be great at blending out your product and giving you a really seamless finish. So when you're applying blush, there are three different places on your cheek that you can apply the product. These three different places are going to give you three very different looks. When you apply product on the apples of your cheeks, which are kind of the highest point where if you smile, that's the roundest part, it's going to give you a more youthful, fresh, plump cheeked look. Now, if you have naturally full plump cheeks that you don't want to emphasize, Placing blush on the apples of your cheeks might not be the best way to go. The second placement is all over the cheek from the apple to the hairline. This is going to be a lot more dramatic and it's going to add a lot of color into your face. But it's also the most versatile way to apply blush because you can use one color along the whole cheek or you can use two colors where you apply one color back here and more of a pop of color just on the apples of your cheeks and that's going to give your look a lot more dimension and make it look a little more unique. And the third placement, which is further back on the cheek, 
avoiding the apples of the cheeks is going to give you a much more sophisticated, almost sculpted look. But if you do already have a fuller face and you don't want to emphasize your full cheeks anymore, then this is the way I would suggest applying blush because you're still going to get the effect of having that color on your face without emphasizing the size of your cheeks. I'm going to show you guys all three placement options, but I'm going to start with the placement for their back on the cheek first. And for this, I'm using the Clinique Heather Pop Blush, which is a satin finish, and I'm using my good old NARS Yachio brush. Now I do have bronzer just very, very lightly on my face just because I wanted to give my face some kind of dimension, but you would still apply blush the exact same way. So I'm just gonna take my brush and really get it in there. And for further back, I generally like to start closer to the hairline and blend it out, really getting it into the hairline. And I don't like to go further than kind of right here when I'm trying to avoid the apples of my cheeks. If you're using a more pigmented blush, right now I just kind of swiped on the blush and really blended it out using a very light hand, but you can also tap and get the product down first and then blend it out because when you tap and place the product first you kind of get a better idea of how intense the product is showing up on your skin and then you can either dust the excess off or just blend it all in. I'm just gonna go back and just add a little bit more and that's usually where I would stop for the number three placement, which is further back on the cheek, avoiding the apples of the cheek. For the number two placement, which is the apples of the cheeks, I'm actually going to use this side because it doesn't have anything other than a little bit of bronzer. For this, I'm taking the Clinique Cheek Pop Blush again, but this time in the color Plum Pop. I'm going to use the same NARS Yachio brush, and I'm just going to tap that in. Now if you don't know exactly where the apples of your cheeks are, just smile. And it's the roundest, fullest part of your cheek in the front. So I'm going to take the product and I'm just going to tap that onto the apples. I am using the tapping motion because I don't want a lot of pigment there. I want the blush to be just very subtle. You can add more or less whatever is your personal taste, but for the apples of the cheeks, that is how far I would go. Placement number two, which is the entire cheek, is super easy. It's basically just combining this side with this side. Like I said earlier, you can use one color on the entire cheek, or you can use two different colors. So since I'm already wearing two different colors on either side of my cheek, I am gonna go ahead and just finish this out. So I'm just going back in with Clinique Plum Pop and I'm tapping my brush in and tap that onto the apples of my cheeks. And then on this side of my face, I'm gonna go ahead and take Heather Pop and put it further back on my cheek. And I'm just using the exact same brush just blend that towards the back. And then for the final step, I'm taking a clean brush and I'm just going to go ahead and use the dual fiber stippling brush. I'm just going to lightly dust this over my face wherever I have product applied just to blend it in and to make sure that it looks seamless with my face. So that is the final blush fully blended out. Now this is the number two technique using two different colors on the entire cheek. You can tell that it's nothing really crazy, nothing over the top provided you're using the right colors for the makeup look and also for your skin tone. It's just going to give you a really pretty flush and having the two different colors is going to give your look a little extra oomph. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up with highlight and I'll be right back. That brings us to the end of today's Makeup 101 video. I hope you guys enjoyed my full powder blush breakdown and hopefully you found it helpful. Leave a comment down below for me and let me know what blush you've been loving recently and as always, what videos you guys want to see from me next. But until my next video, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.
Won't you let me be your favorite? 